Hey what's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to a tour of my main desk setup. So of course if you guys remember from last year I did a video of my entire office and you guys seem to like it as it has amassed over half a million views since then. And within that video I also promised to do a follow up down the road of each side of things. So here I've got a tour of my main editing setup and what I'm on most of the time. A lot has definitely changed, but the reason why I've waited so long to make this video is that I finally settled on things and nothing has changed in the last few months. But as always, every product will be linked in the description section, so check down below if you have any products you're looking for. But let's go ahead and show you guys what's on my setup. Starting out with the right side, you're going to find my lightning dock with the Apple iPhone 6S, which is my daily driver with the Apple battery case. Moving on, one of the biggest complaints I had when using the iMac is the lack of USB ports, so I've got myself an Anchor 4 port hub. You're definitely going to notice later in this video, I did have to purchase a lot of peripherals and a lot of external things from the iMac to make the setup work, but overall, it gets the job done. As for my peripherals, I have the Apple Magic Keyboard and I'm actually a huge fan of this and although people did complain about the angle of it, being a user of the 12 inch Mac for school, I was very used to the keyboard already. Additionally, you have the Logitech MX Master Mouse, which works great for video editing, but it does still have certain problems like connectivity, which shouldn't happen on a mouse of this price. As for the computer, I have a 27-inch 5K iMac, and this is the current model that is maxed out with the 2TB Fusion Drive. As you may imagine, I was very stubborn and sad to get rid of my beloved Mac Pro, but it was ultimately the right decision, as the iMac was able to deliver better performance than the Mac Pro in Final Cut. This is due to the i7 processor having quick sync, which the Xeon processor did not, and Final Cut was able to take advantage of that. For those who like to make fun of me in the comments section for being an Apple fanboy or a Mac user, the reason why I use the Mac is because it is the best for me in terms of productivity, and Final Cut Pro is on Apple computers only. But if you would like to see a behind the scenes on how I edit my videos from start to finish as well as the plugins I use that I seem to get a lot of comments about, hit that like button and I'll get working on that very soon. As you could imagine, I have a lot of ports and cables that are coming out of the iMac, so some of the things I have mounted on the back using a 12 South backpack are a 5 terabyte Western Digital Hard Drive for backups that I got on Boxing Day, as well as a Thunderbolt dock from OWC that gives me many more ports in terms of the USB and the Thunderbolt. On top of the iMac, you're going to find easily the best webcam money can buy, and that is the Logitech C920. This is full HD with autofocus, and I've had one for years. As for the audio, you may remember in the last setup video I did, I had the Focusrite Forte, but I ended up going back to the Focusrite 2i2. With the Forte, I had a lot of problems with disconnection and the drivers, so I decided to go back to the simple 2i2, and I don't notice any difference in the sound quality in general. The microphone I use is still the Rode NT kit, and as you can see, it is a great all-in-one option, but I tend to store this under the desk when I'm not using it, as it takes up quite a bit of space. Moving on, another product that fits very nicely on my desk is the Ugreen Apple Watch charging stand. I've had quite a few in the past, but what I really like about this one is that you can just lay your Apple Watch on it in any angle and it would start charging right away. And also the fact that the charging pad itself is built into the watch stand so you don't need to use the cable supplied with your Apple Watch, which seems to often fall off from these stands where you have to install your own cable. It includes an AC cable that Ugreen has included, but you will also find two additional USB ports on the back. This is definitely a great feature as if you have anything else you would like to charge, you can easily plug it into the stand itself. The Apple Watch looks really good on it and it charges it at a very fast pace, so this is definitely a stand I could recommend to anyone looking for an Apple Watch charging stand at a decent price. Something that I often get a question about when I'm posting a picture of my setup is what the speakers are on my desk. So the speakers are the Audio Engine A2 Plus. I've actually had two of these guys now, one on my previous setup and I purchased another set for the new one and they are probably my favorite desktop speakers. It is obviously for two main reasons, one of them being the fact that they don't take up too much space on the desk, but the second being the tremendous sound quality. The speakers also look incredible on the desk and I think it goes very well with the color scheme of my setup and the office. For the most part, I use my speakers for music listening, but when I'm not, I use the ever so popular ATH-M50X from Audio-Technica. 
These are a very balanced pair of headphones and work especially well when you're trying to reference the audio in a video. And of course I've got a beautiful dbrand skin on it and anyone can go ahead and check out the website to customize their own skin to fix up that boring look of the M50X. I will also link that in the description section below. Moving on to the underside of my desk, you will find an SD card reader and this has all the major formats including a CF card slot, a standard SD card slot, and a micro SD card slot, which makes it so much easier to either have multiple cards or just to be able to access your card in general without having to flip over the iMac every single time to find the SD card slot. In the past, I've been very embarrassed to show you guys the underside of my desk, but I had a friend who does construction work help me out a few weeks ago to make some modifications to the desk because I simply had too many cables and had troubles fitting them in the enclosure that this desk has. So with a few hours of help, as you can see, the desk is absolutely incredible, both on the front and the back. For the most part, there isn't a single cable that hangs from the bottom, and I was just so happy to see the result of this project. What I ended up using for cable management was a J-Track that was screwed into the back of the desk and this was recommended by Ed in one of his setup episodes. But in addition to that, I had some holes drilled on the back of the desk to have the larger power bars fit through the gap. Last but not least, you're going to find a TP-Link Ethernet switch that is on the bottom and the router and modem is actually in the basement of the house so I have wired internet going throughout the office from the theater to the computer setups. But other than that, thank you for joining me in my updated desk setup tour of my main editing and production setup. Some of the things you should be looking forward in the future is a video showing you guys how I edit my videos and what I use, as well as an updated tour just like this one of my second setup that should be ready in the next few months. Of course, if you guys would like to be the first to know of any new changes I make to my setup, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at jtechapple. And if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button as it helps the channel out a bunch. And as I mentioned earlier, all the links to the products featured in this video will be down in the description section below. I'll see you all in the next one.